And with me now on set is media correspondent Anthony Grant for the headlines. We may have missed a little uh, something maybe a little bit different than all of this that we've been talking about. Only IS, uh, only NATO, Joan. Joan, yes. Well, it's a headline that no one has missed, of course, uh, certainly in the United States. Yes. Yeah, maybe you could say around the world. And um, it is very sad. And I, I actually love this headline from the Los Angeles Times. Joan Rivers, well, not the dies at 81 part, but <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's Joan Rivers. Driven diva of stand-up comedy, TV talk. Um, I feel driven like she's diva. the kind of person who even about her death would want people to laugh, would make a joke about her own death. Probably. I mean, you know, she joked about pretty much anything, yeah. you know, and not we'll, we'll talk about it more, but uh, not there was no holds barred, fearless, yeah. you know, politically incorrect, hilarious, um, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, really one of a kind. And we're going to see uh, all sorts of tributes coming out, of um, stories of her life. And, and, of course, on a very, you know, so the somber note, she had gone into cardiac arrest on right. August 28th, sort of uh, controversial, you can say, a medical clinic in New York, which is now under investigation. So there's that aspect of this. But for right now, it's, uh, I would say that the nation, the, uh, well, the, the comedy world, uh, and people everywhere are mourning this, this loss and very pro-Israel, I might add. Mourning a legend. Yeah, um, bringing it right back to Israel, actually. Um, Ynet and other Israeli newspapers were reporting on this story about the, the parents of uh, uh, Daniel Trigerman. This is uh, Gila and Doron Trigerman. The four-year-old four boy. These are the parents of the, of the four-year-old boy who was killed in a mortar fire hit on their home uh, in Nahal Oz, near the Gaza Strip border last month. They have sent a letter to the United Nations um, head, uh, Ban Ki-moon, asking the UN chief to investigate Hamas crimes. And what they are saying is that uh, they're basically protesting the UN Inquiry Commission, whose mandate is to investigate whether Israel's actions right. in the Gaza Strip were a crime. They're so they're certainly they're not turning the first to ask the UN to take a look at Hamas. Yeah, yeah. Also, we could talk about that for hours, but uh, it you know it's sort of the uh, the question here of uh, is this mandate you know stacked against Israel in advance? And people not like very this likely, would say I have yes. to say that uh, for the UN to, for this uh, sadly for this to cause the US to investigate Hamas if. The, the Israeli government's call hasn't really helped, but I guess now yeah. this this is when the legal stuff begins, right after it after does. Operation Protective. It. it does, and it's uh, in, and they are, uh, I would say, uh, being very vocal, and you know, this is of course being picked up in the press, and uh, it's um, it's something that if it may not, you know, turn the tide against the bias perceived or otherwise of the UN, is I think a, a positive step, whether yeah. or not Ban Ki Moon right. will maybe respond. Maybe a family, maybe a family story in the end can have more power than a, a government statement that's somewhat predictable. Yeah, so. well, it does resonate on a very deep. Uh, on a deep level. Um, so we're going to be following that, of course, in the Israeli media uh, in the days ahead. Um, also up in Lebanon, the Daily Star uh, in Beirut reports that uh, this is not so well known outside of the Middle East region, I think, at the moment, but Lebanon has rejected a swap deal in its captive soldiers crisis. And yes, they are having a captive soldiers crisis because of ISIS, or IS. Um, basically, oh, I thought we could avoid ISIS. We couldn't. Just a uh, minutes, this is, and certainly this is a huge problem in Lebanon because uh, about 23 Lebanese soldiers and policemen are being held by uh, the Nusra Front and the so-called Islamic State. They were captured during clashes in the border town of Arsal between the Lebanese army and militants. Right, with Syrian who spillover. Were, were, spillover. Syrian war spillover into Lebanon. Right, and earlier this week uh, the Lebanese papers were talking about how the Islamic State handed over the body of a Lebanese a soldier who had actually been beheaded as a negotiating chip, uh, but it has not worked. The Lebanese cabinet is rejecting demands for this kind of a swap, and people are, are, are understandably very upset about this uh, situation. In it's really Lebanon. interesting to look at this in the Middle East about prisoner swaps because obviously here in Israel it's a very, very big deal, and there's this yeah. big debate over should it happen or not. Maybe the tide turning a little bit against it, but you have Israel that used to say we will never negotiate with terrorists. Now clearly is, but Lebanon on the other hand saying no. Yeah, yeah, and but of course you know, and IS being ruthless uh, on on a level that we haven't seen in you know I don't know a long, long time might be changing Bring that equation, too. Bring new definition too. to the word yeah. terror, certainly. Uh, again, in the uh, Middle East, the Times of Israel has a timely story about Israel and Jordan. This uh, Israel-Jordan gas, gas deal, deal is uh, called a, a bulwark against uh, jihadis, according to some experts. This is uh, the agreement to sell Jordan natural gas worth $15 billion over the next 15 years. Um, it's the third part of a trilateral arrangement between um, basically Jerusalem, Amman, and Cairo. It's kind of designed not just economically, but to sort of shore up 
relations between the three uh, countries. It seems, if anything, economy is probably one of the only things that can actually bring countries together. In the well, Middle you know, East. money, nice money gets positive. people talking. Yeah. <laughs> talking is better than shooting. And I shooting. think this deal turns <laughs> Israel into Jordan's biggest supplier of natural gas, which is It, it may well do that. Yeah. Think. I mean, Israel, of course, is producing the gas. Egypt will liquefy it. Jordan will benefit a from it. Steps. Yeah, so a triangular thing well, going good on Good to there. see one positive development mm. in the Middle East. But it's also, you know, as this New York Times headline reminds us, uh, this is a risky kind of work um, uh, in a completely different part of the world. A judge has found oil giant BP um, uh, reckless. In, yeah, yeah, this is a big deal. And then 2010 Deepwater Horizon drilling rig explosion in the Gulf of Mexico, they risk being fined an, uh, $18 billion wow. in civil penalties. Of course, that, they're going to appeal. Do you think that's big money for an oil company? I mean, it seems That's more than chump change. I think that's, that's, that's if it weren't yeah. a big deal, they wouldn't be so quick to appeal. So it didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it does. But they're, they're appealing that decision. Um, but the judge found that BP was responsible for 67% of the blame, which came from this tragedy that actually killed 11 people in addition to allowing millions of barrels of oil left, to dump into the sea. Right. This, I mean, it ends and you have the legal process, but this whole area can't, it can't have recovered. From this already, so I, yeah, hopefully this money will actually go to some kind of environmental. Um, to the people who need um, all the small businesses also that always depend on fishing and so on. Yeah, they take a big hit too. So I, you know, whether or not that's going to go far in appeal, I mean, I, I doubt it. But of course, it's the United States, so justice keeps turning and appeals keep being made. <laughs> Anthony, I know there are more headlines I want to talk about, but you'll be back here uh, for some more stuff a little bit okay, later for soon. web review. So I'll see you very soon. And coming up. A closer look at the Islamic State. Why is beheading the calling card of this group and where have they spread so far? But first, let's hear some more of this morning's headlines. Stay with us.